Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and I have to open with a few provisos about this video. One, it's not about board games. Two, it's the teensiest bit gross, so if you're squeamish, maybe watch something different. And three, I'm not a professional anything. What you see in this video does not constitute medical advice. Don't try this at home. All right, so if you know me, if you know adult, right, if you've known me for a few years, if you've seen me on my YouTube channel, you've probably noticed these two yellow ovals above my eyelids. What the heck are those things anyway? Well, those are called xanthelasma or xanthoma, depending on where they appear on your body. And they're cholesterol deposits. How do I get them? I don't know, high cholesterol? Can you get them without high cholesterol? Yes. Uh, do they go away on their own? No. Do I want them to go away? Yes, desperately. How long have I had them? Well, uh, it's been maybe 20 years. They started very, very small as circles, and then they kind of actually did go away, and then they came back with a vengeance, and now they're gigantic, and they've been gigantic. Why haven't I got rid of them until now? Well, it's because I always had an excuse. I always, it was always, I had to be on camera because I was doing commercials on TV or I had to go speak in front of people at a conference or something. There's always a reason not to uh, you know, get them dealt with because that leaves your face in a little bit of a state for a while. And I didn't want my face to be in more of a state than it already is with these goofy things on it. So what can you do about xanthalasma if you have them? Well, there are three methods of dealing with them that I know of. The first one is excision, surgery. So you can go to a surgeon and he or she can cut them out and stitch them up. And that ends up with a little bit of scarring and there's a uh, reasonably high recurrence rate, which means that it's a pretty good chance that they'll come back. Second thing that you can do is you can do a chemical peel. So you can put a substance on called trichloroacetic acid and burn them off your face. Get a dermatologist to do that. And the third option that escaped my mind while I was shooting this is laser ablation. So they can use a laser to burn the things off your face. So I actually did end up going to an eyelid surgeon and he said, yeah, I can excise those, no problem, we'll stitch them up. And I asked him if he could provide me pictures of what people, what his past patients have looked like that he's done that to. And he said, no. And he claimed that it was a privacy concern. And I said, couldn't you put like black spots over people's eyes or blur them out and just see the eyelids? That's really all I care about. He said, no. And I said, isn't it common practice when you go to you know, people who've done plastic surgery to see examples of their work? No, 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 we can't do that, can't do that. I said, I think you can. He goes, no. I said, well, how much does the procedure cost? He said, $900. And I said, so you want me to pay you $900 to cut these things off of my eyes? There's a high recurrence rate and you won't show me pictures of people you've done it to so I can see what the scarring looks like? He said, no. And I said, well, forget it. So then I looked into chemical peels. Like I mentioned, that TCA, that trichloroacetic acid. And what I found out is that you can just get trichloroacetic acid. And if you've got the guts, you can do this to yourself. Now, you could go to a dermatologist, but the problem is, again, there's a, you know, a reasonable assurance of recurrence after you do that. So you could pay the money to a dermatologist to get them to do it. Or you could just buy the stuff yourself and do it yourself. Now, the drawback, of course, when you do it yourself is that you risk um, blindness, but I mean, you save a couple bucks, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Years and years ago, I went to the drugstore and I ordered, they gave me a whole jar of trichloroacetic acid. I can't remember what I paid for it, but I chickened out and I left it in my fridge long past expiry date, so I wasn't able to use that. But there's another product that people have been lauding when they talk about doing this, this is xanthalasma removal. Uh, it's called Wartner Veruca and Wart Remover. And that's obviously for warts, it's not for these things, but people have reported that they have had great luck with it. So I ordered a stick, and again, I chickened out, I let it expire, but I paid maybe 35 bucks on Amazon, American Amazon. I'm in Canada and you actually can't buy it on Amazon here in Canada. But now I have a second tube just waiting for me and I'm out of excuses. Even though I'm doing more videos on YouTube and I just wanna take the time, it's around Christmas time now, and I'm going to actually uh, lie back and let my wife Cheryl, do it to me in the eyeballs and take these things off with the Wartner stick. Now, what's interesting about the Wartner stick is I got to wondering, well, what's the active ingredient in this Wartner pen that takes off warts and verrucas? Apparently, the active ingredient 
is trichloroacetic acid. So these people have just, you know, discovered the method that dermatologists are already using. They've just found a more cost-effective way to do it in this stick. There are different concentrations of trichloroacetic acid that you can get. If you go to a dermatologist, they might use 80, 90, 100%. I'm not too sure about what the concentration of, of the Wardner stick is, but I know that people have used it effectively and it's enough to get rid of these suckers. What can I expect? Well, I can expect being very nervous that I'm going to tear up from the pain, the searing pain of this stuff because apparently it's not very pain-free method, but I worry about tearing up and the tears flushing the acid into my eyes and then I won't be able to see for the rest of my life. But we're going to take steps to avoid that, which you'll see shortly. First, we're going to put a dam of Vaseline around or underneath them so that it will create sort of like a wall and prevent the acid from going anywhere that we don't want it to go. Second precaution is we're going to have sort of like eye wash station equipment nearby so that if anything does get into my eyeball, I can I can s s squeeze some water in there and flush them out and hopefully that'll, hopefully it won't come to that. And then the third thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort of lean back over the couch with my head back because these are high enough up. Some people have them right on their eyelids and a lot closer to their eyeballs. I'm very fortunate that these are kind of up and away from my eyeballs. So I'm going to lean back and hopefully any runoff is going to go, you know, through the help of gravity that way instead of that way into my eyeball. So those are the precautions that I'm going to take. I actually reached out to a bunch of dermatologists on social media and they said, don't do this. Don't, don't, are you crazy? Pay a dermatologist to do this. I'll do my YouTube channel. I don't know. I'm going to do it on my on my own with the help of my wife, Cheryl, and my lovely family. And then apparently I can expect my pain and then uh, they're going to turn white and then they're going to blister and they're going to get super gross. And that's going to go on for maybe a month, maybe two months. But the, at the end of that, they're, they're going to be flat. They're going to be gone. There may be discoloration left so you can get hypopigmentation so they can be brighter than the rest of the skin or shinier than the rest of the skin or not. But you know what's great is that even if they are hypopigmented when I flatten them out, the problem with the bumps is that you can't really put makeup on to obscure them because, you know, if you've ever had a zit and you put foundation or cover up on it, you still see the zit, right? It's a, it's a relief thing. But if you're able to use this TCA to peel them down to skin level, then they're flat and you're able to actually put on concealer or whatever and, and then hide them that way if you need to. So I'm not too worried about discoloration at all. Recurrence, I'm less worried about now because I'm not paying 900 bucks and I'm not going to a dermatologist. If they recur, then six months from this procedure, I'm going to squeeze more stuff out of the tube and get rid of the new ones that crop up. So I think this is a pretty foolproof, fail-safe way to go at it. So I, I'm excited. Here we go. And we decided to forego the Vaseline dam because. Are you filming? Yeah. Already? I'm yes. not ready for you to film. Oh, this is prep. I'm filming prep. Don't feel prep. So Cheryl was worried that the Vaseline would ooze into the xanthalasma and confuse the acid. So she'd like to keep it as bare bones as possible. My head is tilted back over the arm of the couch so that runoff goes this way, but it threatens to shoot straight up my nose. The camera, not oh the acid. God. Okay. Cheryl's, Cheryl's stressed out because she thinks that she's gonna blind me. I don't think she's gonna blind me. I don't know how much this hurts, but people online have described it as like the Dickens. So you won't be able to see everything that Shishir does, but she's putting gloves on now. now. That's a familiar sound. No, just kidding. Where is the stick? Where's the what? What part of my body do you think you're doing? The Wartner stick. Oh, the stick. Oh, I have it right here. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to shake it or what. Are you? I don't know. Shake it. Who cares? It's not going to hurt anything. Are there instructions in the box for it? Yeah, maybe you can bring it down here so we can see it on the camera. So you just pull the cap off, not directly above my face, but yeah, right there. You pull the cap off, a little bit down so they can see it. Yeah. Okay. Pull the cap off and okay. you go. twist the back until a bead of gel forms at the tip. Just like they taught you in health class. It's 
way. Nothing's coming out. Probably not that way. Are you sure that this is still good? This is the new one, right? I don't know. Oh, here we go. I can see it filling. Gosh, that's really... Okay, here we go. Alright, are you ready for this? As ready as I'll ever be. It's been 20 years. Okay. Oh god, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This one first or the furthest one? The furthest one, probably. Do this one? Yeah. Okay. So tilt a little closer to me. Yeah, there we go. like way off of it because you like you flinched can't flinch just gonna make sure that yeah that works oh my gosh you're you're so flinchy it hurts okay okay i just want to make sure i got it down here does it feel like it's burning down like where i'm touching it feels like it's burning everywhere Okay, okay. All right, babe. I'm gonna... So it feels a little bit like a... I'm gonna, I need to do a new one of these. And it's not running down or anything? Oh, no. No. It feels a little... I did get it off of your thing. I'm sorry, uh, but you totally... Don't there... flinch, okay? Don't. Can you cotton swab it? I already did, and I, tr I neutralized it. But this, it was, it's too, like... The skin's already white now. It feels a little bit like an alcohol burn. You know, or when you put, what's that stuff you put on cuts to clean them? Like rubbing alcohol? Kind of thing, yeah, but uh, a little bit harsher than that. Okay, hold on. Turn towards me just a little bit. Just want to make sure I get down here. Does it feel like it's burning right there I'm touching? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels like an alcohol burn, except the alcohol pain subsides fairly quickly. This is lingering. It's hanging around. On a scale of 1 to 10, though, I'd put it maybe a 5 or a 6. Okay. Like, it's not unbearable pain by any means. Right. Okay. So, I, I got it. I can confidently say I got both of them very well. Great. No, it didn't leak towards your eyeballs or anything. Because it's gel, right? Like, it's not very viscous. It's it's viscous enough that I overshot on both ends. Hmm. Hey, Suri. Set a timer for one minute. Your timer is set for one minute. Hey, Siri. Should you put acid in your eyes? She's not answering. Yeah, because she's like, it's obvious. But I can see it's still very... um. What in the middle? You can, you can put a fan on my face and dry me out. Let me get that. Cheryl, I think there's a duck in here. Yeah. Do you mind if I just fan me? Fan you? A Feed bit. me oh. grapes. Oh. Hold on. I'll do the, the lid from my sewing tin. And I'll just fan you. So that's just to dry it out, you think? Yeah, because it's still wet. Oh, shit. Just, <laughs> this is a medical office we are not. It's still wet in a couple of sections. Okay, I think we're good. Let's just. Let me ask you this. If you were interested in self-treating like this, would you want a buddy or would you, would you think you could do it to yourself or would no. you? No, eh? I would, no, someone has to apply it. Cause you gotta keep your eyes closed, right? You keep your eyes closed and steady and. You have it too? No, I'm just saying if people are watching and they're thinking, hmm, I'd like to try this out myself, but do I really need a share share? Do I really need... Yeah, you would never want tilt to... Tilt your, it. tilt your head back a bit. Thank you. I'm just going to blot it, okay? Mm -hmm. Does that feel good? Well, what? yeah, it doesn't. Okay. It 
Well, this is what it feels like to save 900 bucks. And now the pain is just kind of like a dull ache. Okay. Not super strong by any means. I'd put it like at a one. Okay, did you want to hold that? Okay. Does that feel good? That feels a little bit soothing. How does it look like? When do you think it's safe to open my eyes? I don't know. I mean, it <laughs> wouldn't open them even when they said it was fine. Um, I'm going to open them. Can I open them? You feel okay? Wow, look at them. They're very white. Yeah, look at that. So I will take a shot every day and we'll just do a little time lapse and we'll see how many days it takes. Could be a month, could be two months. And I'll have to wear sunglasses in my YouTube videos until then. <laughs> and uh, we'll just see how they end up looking. So I'm going to go a little slowly through the first couple of days because watch, here's day one, there's day two, day three. And then by day four, it kind of felt like nothing was really happening. They were a little bit yellower and they felt a little bit tougher but they weren't blistering or going away like I had seen in other people's pictures. So on day four, impatient for something to happen and worried that we'd kind of wasted our time with that first application, Cheryl and I decided to do a second application. Up my nose again. Aim the camera up my nose. Anyway, so I wanted to talk about the way it feels so far after the first application. Like I say, day four, it's a bit dry and I can feel them, like they're not super sore or anything, but I'm more aware of them here. And the skin around here and here feels more irritated than it ever did before. So that's a change. I don't know what went wrong the first time. I have a feeling it either takes more than one application or we didn't leave it on long enough. And hopefully putting it on the second time isn't gonna bore a pair of holes through my skull or anything. But the directions for the Wartner gel explicitly say do not use on sensitive skin. And this isn't like, they're not tough like scales, they're soft. I'm not as nervous as I was the first time, but I still don't want to mess my face up too terribly. My beautiful, beautiful face. Cheryl's got her best jammies on, she's just getting the Q-tips. Okay, Cheryl, sure, sure. once more with feeling. Trying harder to keep my eyelids pressed closed this time. Thank you, yes. So yes. I don't buck like I did last time. No flinching. Ooh, feels like a line of hot fire. I didn't miss that feeling. Ow, 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 ow. Is it hurting more this yeah, time? Yeah, it's more sensitive this time, that's for sure. Ooh, yeah, that's quite a bit more sensitive than the first time. I've never had a tattoo, but I imagine this is what that would feel like. So instead of what the two or three minutes we, we tried the first time, we're going to leave this on for five. five. We'll try five. Start the countdown clock. Does it help with the pain? A little bit, yeah. The cooling feels kind of nice. Didgeridoo hits by Ryan. I can't tell if my mouth is in the shot, but I'm not really playing the didgeridoo. Oh. Then they'll never know. Probably the microphone is only picking up the fan, so you won't be able to hear my awesome didgeridoo jokes. Now the pain has just sort of subsided into that vague irritation that I've kind of been feeling for the past four days. This is where it feels a little bit sore, kind of irritated. It's kind of like after you skin your knee, you know, like a week later, you just got this vague kind of annoying pain on your knee and you're like, oh yeah, I skinned my knee last week. That's kind of how it feels right now. Yeah. I hear a duck. The duck means time's up. Uh -huh. That was five minutes. I felt fast. Yeah, I'm just using my, don't open your eyes. I can tell. I don't know, should I open my eyes? What do you think? You can tissue it up if mm. you feel the need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're very white now. You saw them? Yeah, briefly. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. They lit up like little Christmas trees, little cholesterol trees. I hate them. I hate them and they can die in a fire. <laughs> Maybe that's what we'll try next. Fire. 
All right. Well, I'll keep ta taking my daily pictures and see if they blister off now. Okay, now here's where it really started to pick up. See, we're humming along, it's getting drier and drier and worse and worse. And then by day 12, I could tell there was something nasty brewing behind these scabs that had formed. And I asked Cheryl if she thought it was okay if I picked them off. She said, no, don't touch them. But it felt like something was wrong. So I touched them and I didn't have to touch them much. They came off and behind them was a pus filled wonderland. Super gross. This is a great time to remind everybody to hit the like button subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. If this video gets enough likes, I'll be sure to include more pus in future videos. The pus would come back every few hours or so and I would keep gently wiping it away with a tissue. And that went on for a few more days before the holes sort of started to scab up with a more recognizable darker red stuff. So here's what the rest of the healing process looked like and how long it took. I'm going to skip ahead here because by day 45, they had healed about as much as they were ever going to. So here's day 45, and we'll skip ahead to day 64. So not a whole lot of difference between the two. But you may notice that there's this little yellowy white spot that just appeared right in the corner. Is that the xanthelasma recurring? Or is that just kind of what the scar tissue is looking like? I don't really know, but I don't feel like it's a huge deal. So here it is back to back. There's my before. And there's my after. And there you have it. So here's what I look like today. This is in March. So it's about three months after we did the procedure. I say we. It was really Cheryl. Of course, big props to Cheryl for doing all the hard work as usual. Is it perfect? No. Is it better than what would have happened if I'd paid the 900 bucks? I don't know. I haven't seen pictures. I have no idea what that would have looked like. Am I happy with the way it turned out? Yes, extremely. The xanthelasma are gone, and they might be back, but even if they are, would I do this again? Well, yeah, I would. There's a whole lot more product left in that tube. And I still think it's more straightforward than going and paying the money to a dermatologist or a doctor. I really, really do. Of course, I can't recommend that you do that. The eyelid surgeon did warn me that if he did the procedure on me, there would be about a month month and a half recovery time, which I would look really, really bad, which sounds about on par with what just happened to me. So I don't think recovery wise, there would have been a whole lot of a difference. Now, if you have xanthelasma on your eyelids and you want to get rid of them, I can't recommend, of course, that you do this procedure yourself. But what I can do is if you are watching this on YouTube and you look beneath the video, in the notes below, I have an Amazon affiliate link for the Wartner pen. If you click that and shop for your own, your price remains the same and I get a teensy little kickback. Now, this is not to use on your own face, mind. This is just a commemorative tube of Wartner TCA. Just keep it on a shelf and look at it every once in a while and it will remind you of this video. If you'd like to support me another way, of course, I have a Patreon account. Jump in there, join my crew. There's a bunch of cool stuff and we talk on the Discord server all the time. Thank you for indulging me with this one. I really appreciate it. If you liked my videos before, but you were like, nah, he's kind of like Rodney Smith, except he's got these weird things on his eyes. Well, I don't have the weird things on my eyes anymore. So now you and your family can watch in comfort without your young children screaming and running out of the room in fear. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you in the next one. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.